All right. Good morning, everyone. Once again, my name is Tanya Farmoon, and I work with the Northwest Portland Air and Health Board as the Tribal Community Health Provider Program Specialist here at the at the board. Um, today, uh, this morning is um, Tuesday, October twelfth, and our CHAP Echo Learning Collaborative will be starting shortly. Just wanted to thank everyone for joining us this morning. And for those who are just uh, joining us, this session will be recorded. And for this session, okay, for this session, our team here at the Northwest Portland Air and Health Board wanted to share the latest developments of the Behavioral Health Aid Education Program here for our tribes in the Northwest. And when I say the Northwest, for our tribes here in Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. Since 2018, this discipline of CHAP, the Community Health Aid Program, has evolved and gained support with the help and guidance of our team, our partners, our tribes, our community members, and our funders. And so once again, thank you for spending your morning with us. And as you can see, the agenda is right here. We'll be sharing that with you um, later on the session. And what I'd like to do is, I'm going to give the floor to Miss Katie, Katie Hunsberger, to introduce our first guest. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Katie Hunsberger. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the BHA Behavioral Health Aid Student Support Coordinator at the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board. Um, I do a lot of student recruitment, working with the students um, that are currently pursuing the BHA track through Alaska's um, Native Health Consortium program and recruiting for this first Northwest cohort. Um, I have a slideshow that I would like to share with you all about the BHA education program and the recruitment efforts that we are currently in process of. And then in between, um, that time when we start talking about the two um, institutions, Northwest Indian College and Heritage University, um, I will have Corey Hodge and Yikai State Gorman um, hop on and give an update to the curriculum um, and where their institution is at. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and get started. Can you see my screen okay? Um, this is just a quote that I uh, was reading. I am a student myself I'm in school right now. So um, I'm constantly reading um, indigenous scholars and doing my research surrounded by um, native peoples. Um, but I really appreciated this quote and it uh, goes really well with uh, the program that we're building. After 400 years of experience as the oppressed Native peoples of our country, it is time we implemented the concept of self-determination as Native Americans and assert control over our lives. By controlling the education of our young through Native American studies, we are molding the Native American of tomorrow with the attributes of warrior, scholar, and community activist. But the finished product can only result through us as Native American educators taking the initiative to incorporate time-tried perspectives into the new academic sphere of Native American studies. And that's by Dr. Henrietta White and Bruce Cheyenne. So I just wanted to, to get started in that way. Um, here's a few of the things that we'll be covering today. I'm gonna to talk about um, what a behavioral health aid is in the background, how we got here in the Northwest and where it started from, um, who can be a behavioral health aid. Then I'll talk about recruitment and we'll get updates from the two institutions. And then we will talk about some of the student support and benefits that they will receive throughout the program. A little bit of background. Um, this program started in Alaska and it has moved to the lower 48 states as they like to call us down here. Um, but in the early 1990s, Alaska began establishing a need for behavioral health aids. They had community health aids, they had dental health aids established. Um, so the behavioral health aid role was next on their list. So the Alaska legislator established the Rural Human Services System Project and funded village-based counselors in 40 villages in Alaska. 
In the early 2000s, Indian Health Service funds were provided by Congress to develop a BHA program um, done in Alaska, like I said. And then in 2009, the process for establishing and certifying BHAs was fulfilled and the very first BHA was certified. Um, it was showing a lot of success. And so in 2016, the CHAP Community Health Aid Program expanded to other Indian Health Service areas, um, that leading to um, 2018, where the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board established a BHA advisory work group. And this work group consists of elders, um, councilwomen, councilmen, tribal leaders, um, and Oregon, Washington, Idaho tribes, um, uh, Oregon, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Native health organizations. Um, so they all came together collaboratively to be a part of this work group and begin the development of the BHA program that would be specific to the Northwest area. So that has been the last two to three years. In 2020, um, I was onboarded um, with the team. Um, we are the Tribal Community Health Provider Project Team, TCHPP. Um, so we are the project under the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board implementing community health aids, dental health aids, and behavioral health aids. Um, our team since 2020 um, and a lot of new transitions and people on this team, uh, we started to collaborate heavily with the advisory work group, um, the two colleges, Heritage University, Northwest Indian College, tribes, health departments, um, all kind of uh, trying to identify prospective students in tribal health department um, roles and um, uh, organizations uh, so that we could uh, recruit this first cohort of students. So that is a very um, kind of short answer to how we got to where we are, but a lot of work has been put in both in Alaska um, and the Northwest. So we were really excited to talk about um, the future and where we're going from here. This is our logo. You may have seen it on flyers and circulating uh, for the Behavioral Health Aid Program. Um, it was created by Corey Begay, who is Diné. Um, he is a graphic designer and artist who is a contractor for the board. Um, and I think it's a really symbolic and beautiful logo. So we'll just quickly um, kind of go over what it means. And this is in the words of Corey. Um, the meaning story behind the logo design uh, was to encompass representation for the Northwest tribes in Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. So let's start from the bottom. I created roots as a visual to represent the High Plains tribes for food, medicine, and many other things. The next layer up is water from the major rivers to the smaller rivers and water sources throughout the Northwest, giving life to many things, including salmon. The three salmon inside the water I wanted to represent the three states. Um, and then the third is the land where you can see the resources for tools, travel, material. Um, the baskets are a small representation of that as they are viewed under the trees. And then on the top, we have the eagle um, that blesses our paths, our travels, and our lifestyles to keep us going in a healthy direction. So this is the um, logo for the BHA program, and we really love it. And you'll see it um, a lot at this point forward. Um, so what is the definition of a behavioral health aid? Alaska Native Health Consortium, ANTHC, uh, defines a BHA as um, this statement right here. They're counselors, they're health educators, they're advocates. Um, they're doing community-based needs. Um, they are working with alcohol, drug, to be, drug and tobacco abuse, uh, mental health issues, uh, such as grief, depression, and suicide. BHAs seek to achieve balance, Community by integrating their sensitivity to cultural needs with specialized training and be in behavioral health concerns and approaches to treatment. Um, and so they approach um, their specific to village-based Alaska needs. So this is Alaska's definition, um, but it's a very important one. Who do BHA serve? They serve everyone. They can serve elders, youth, family, individuals. Um, some similar roles that are already existing in a tribal health department could be peer recovery mentors, peer support specialists, uh, traditional health workers, um, CHRs. Um, these roles are um, currently um, 
or often in um, tribal health organizations. So these can be similar uh, parallel roles that BHAs can kind of um, work their way into or uh, broaden the scope of. Who can be a BHA? Anyone can be a BHA, anyone and everyone. A few of the um, qualities, characteristics um, that you could um, find in a BHA would be these things. They're natural helpers, they're advocates for the community, advocates for themselves and the people that they serve. Um, who really want to tie in cultural activities into their day-to-day -day work. They can be community members, tribal members, people who have that trust and relationships within uh, tribal communities, so that this homegrown collective who are committed uh, to serving the tribal community. They can be counselors, good listeners, empaths, aunties, uncles, storytellers, um, to incorporate this into their counseling methods. And they can be holistic caregivers and healers who really want to tie in traditional, uh, tribal traditional practices into their day-to-day -day work. So they can be all of these things. They can be one of these things. Um, it's really open to anyone. Uh, these are some examples of the work that BHAs can be doing. So if a BHA isn't currently working in a tribal health organization, but they're working at um, a tribal school or they're doing community um, engagement or activities or advocacy. Um, it can be anyone who is working for the tribe who's already encompassing some of these goals, um, but would really like to gain a bigger perspective in behavioral health. Um, so they could be doing community prevention activities. They could be working on sobriety powwows, potlucks, smudge, um, MMIW walks, community parades, culture classes are really great. Um, you know, culture is medicine, um, beating, um, gardening, incorporating that into behavioral health for the community is important because um, it's reconnecting us. It's a time for us to share space together um, and learn from each other and, um, you know, build rapport in a healthy, holistic way. Um, health education, Maybe some, someone in the community is already doing parenting classes or uh, teaching prevention topics like violence, alcohol, um, bullying, um, self-care. There's a community member who is um, involved in yoga or meditation, um, incorporating that into a BHA scope of practice um, and spreading it throughout a tribal community. Also people who are working with these curriculums such as Native Stand, Will Bridey, um, 49 Days of Ceremony, or who would like to learn more about that to incorporate it. Um, and then you have these um, others that are a little bit more specific to someone who's already working in a, um, a behavioral health position, screening and assessment, um, gathering information to screen, um, assessing and identifying client needs, case management and referral, um, working collaboratively with um, all departments, getting clients the resources that they need within the community, outside of the community, whatever that may look like. Um, early intervention, crisis intervention, and postvention. And so those are some of the topics that we'll be focused heavily on in year two, I believe, um, but will be provided throughout the curriculum of the two-year program. But utmost and foremost, and most importantly, um, BHAs are really striving to incorporate their culture into the work. Um, they are educated in traditional healing, spiritual healing as mentored by their tribal respective practitioners. Um, they also will have a mentor, knowledge holder, or culture keeper that can help tie in some of those pieces. They're wanting to learn more about their own tribal community, um, outside tribal communities, we encourage that. Um, and they are incorporating things like smudging, um, talking circles, um, sweat lodges, all of these things that they um, probably do outside of work into the work, um, into their scope of work um, so that, you know, the culture is um, in the center of the, of the program itself. Here's just a glance at some of the services BHAs provide. Uh, this is a two-year program, so there are currently two levels, a BHA one and a BHA two. So by the time the student graduates after year two, they will be a BHA two. Um, and I do wanna quickly note that Alaska's program does have two additional levels, a BHA three and a BHA practitioner. Um, we are hoping to 
to build those um, higher levels in the future. But for now, we're focusing on these first two levels. Um, and so under BHA1, you can kind of see some of these topics um, that they can start implementing community needs assessment, advocacy and behavioral health, um, life, life skill and resource development or coaching, medication education, um, individual in, uh, interventions. So they can start doing group facilitations, talking circles, wellness promotion. Um, and then BHA2, it is kind of a higher focus on that substance misuse um, and substance use disorder, um, kind of going through diagnosis, assessment, treatment planning, uh, community readiness, and family interventions or counseling. What does it take to be certified? Um, so a student will be um, given a degree or a certificate, depending on their uh, institution of choice, um, but they will be certified through the Portland Area CHAP Certification Board um, which was just stood up. Um, it is a federal board, I believe. And I'm sorry, I'll have someone on my team um, talk to this if there are any questions about it after. Um, but it consists of 13 members of um, doctors and professionals and tribal and councilwomen um, who are the board, um, who work in the dental health aid, community health aid and behavioral health aid role. Um, and to be certified at the end of the two years, a BHA will need a completed 2,000 hours of work experience, um, 1,000 for each year, each level. Um, and so 1,000 hours is equal to about six months of full-time work. So even if you have a part-time employee, that 1,000 hours the first year is still pretty doable. Um, so 2,000 hours total, which is equivalent to one year of work, um, and this needs to be under a master's level clinical supervisor. The clinical supervisor will kind of be um, overseeing the work in the clinic or group facilitations, whatever they, that may look like. Um, they will, of course, need um, the um, completed coursework at either institution that they choose. And they also have this um, 200 practicum hours, and we provide a BHA log for students to track their hours. They're kind of specific. It could be like 25 hours um, uh, doing case management, another 25 in a different area. Um, so we provide that tool for them so that they're uh, able to track it easily. They'll need all of these things to be certified under the Portland Area CHOP Certification Board. Um, so I'm going to start talking about recruitment for the Northwest. This is the most important piece. We have a deadline coming up for applications. Um, this is a flyer that you may have seen circulating. Um, and here at the board, we are um, working with the two institutions to recruit up to 12 students for Heritage or Northwest Indian College, 12 students each for this very first cohort um, to to be a part of the, the first cohort, cohort in the Northwest. Um, and so we're working collaborati collaboratively with the schools, um, working with tribes and tribal health departments um, to see if they can self-identify people who could be a good fit for this. Um, so here are the two academic institutions. I'm gonna go over some of their, um, uh, varying differences, and then I'll um, shop, stop my share screen and let uh, both institutions give an update as to where they are. Um, <clears throat> but first, we have Heritage University. They're a private university in Toppenish, Washington, uh, the, near the Yakima Nation. They will be offering a behavioral health aid certificate, a two-year BHA certificate. Um, they are semester-based. Um, they are hoping to have mostly in-person classes with some online sessions. Um, we also have Northwest Indian College. They are a tribal college in Bellingham, Washington, and they will be offering a two-year associate in technical arts in ATA and chemical dependency. Um, and they are quarter slash term based, um, and they will have mostly online courses. Um, but I'm going to stop my share screen and allow um, each of the universities to give their updates um, and uh, where they're at with their curriculum. Um, and if they wanna speak further to any of their um, 
online or in-person um, offering, um, that would be a great time for that to share as well. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Hi, Katie, this is Tanya. Before we move forward, I just wanted to uh, ask if there were any questions out there that our participants might have for Katie. Yes, uh, uh, Tim Davis from Blackfeet. Uh, good presentation, Katie. Uh, Katie, thank you. Uh, on the course curriculum there that the Heritage U and the Northwest Indian College uh, provides for the students, the 12 potential candidates that are in the, the hopper for recruitment, is, is there any online opportunities? Because I, I noticed it just says Northwest, the three states that you mentioned leaves off Montana, where I'm from. And we're, you know, we're not salmon eaters, we're buffalo eaters, but um, uh, I just wanted to ask the question, Northwest schools and colleges, they accredit this program that you give AA in at Bellingham and Toppenish. And then the classes that uh, the curriculum uh, courses, I noticed you give up for uh, uh, AA and um, chemical dependency. And what was the other part for uh, Northwest? Uh, they had uh, two prongs there, but I just, I just wonder if anything's online for us that live outside of uh, those three states that you're recruiting from. Yeah, so this, so currently, um, the board is being assisted through a FERSA grant to, okay. um, to, to fund pretty much this first cohort. And so those are pretty specific to Oregon, Washington, and Idaho tribes okay. for this, you know, just to get the program started. I'm however, sorry. however, um, it's, it will not be closed off to just those three tribes, anyone um, any tribe in the country will be able to apply um, and, and do the coursework through that chosen institution. Um, so the board right now is just kind of trying to get the tribes in this region familiar with the role, what a BHA is, just to kind of get it started. But we do hope that um, it'll be nationwide and spread, um, hopefully, so that BHAs can be in implemented far and wide. Uh, Katie, can I can I offer a response as well to Tim's question, if I may? Um, Tim, to your point, um, I've already I'm at Heritage University, and I'll do I'll you know introduce myself. But in response to your question, I've already had this um, thought of reaching out to um, other other uh, tribal communities that are not within the the forty the Northwest tribes. Um, to see what uh, potentially could unfold with, um, because there's definitely a need there. And I think um, I thought of, um, you know, I just had a conversation with Oglala Lakota College social work chair. And so, you know, moving it in, uh, to other tribal communities, but I mean, this is a, this is a program that um, education path Way that it has never been done, and so we're in the we're the trailblazers of of uh, developing this program. But I really believe that it's necessary to um, embed it within other tribal communities as well. Thank you. Also, on that on that note, uh, we are also in the process here in Montana of getting you know our our, our accreditation board certification board here because we have you know several colleges in Montana as well uh, some of the guys from your end over there the SKC people they have a, a very good uh, dental hygienist program here at Blackfeet we have a nursing program so we feel we can you know model after your guys to start here and thank you for blazing that trail because we, we, we have to work together as tribes I'm glad you reached out to Oglala and uh, we look forward to some productive meetings going forward because we, we need to do this for our people. And it's an opportunity that we have to seize. So thank you very much. Thank you, Tim, for that great question. And also too, thank you to Katie for giving us a brief synopsis of what a BHA is, uh, a, a quick history of what the BHA program is, the overall history, recruitment efforts, and actually sharing what the logo, uh, the meaning of our logo, Without the support and guidance of our BHA advisory work group, this particular piece wouldn't have been able to happen. So with their input and with their support and guidance, that's how we were able to create this BHA logo for everyone. Katie, if you'd be able to introduce our next guest, and I'm also monitoring the chat box and you're looking good so far. Thank you. 
Great. Well, I think I'm going to hand it over. I can't remember who is on the agenda first, but they're both here. Um, so I think I'll hand it over to Heritage. Um, so we have Dr. Maxine Janice and uh, Corey Hodge. Um, I'll let them introduce themselves, but I will um, turn it over to, to you both. Thank you, Katie. I'm going to share my screen. All right, is that there? Are we seeing that? Fabulous. I've got a, it's, it's a, smooshed a little here, it looks like. Um, and is it getting cut off? I think it'll be okay. The date's the only thing that's. Uh, well, I'm, I think they're going to get bigger here. Let me, uh, let me start by introducing myself. And then while I try to fiddle with the um, slide here, we can um, have Dr. Janice introduce herself too. Um, I'm Corey Hodge. I'm chair of the social work program here at Heritage University. Um, I've been with the university for about 15 years and I'm just incredibly thrilled about this program and presenting it to you. Dr. Janice. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, a better wash day, uh, a delayed uh, happy indigenous day. Um, and, uh, all the relatives throughout Indian country. Yeah. Um, but I just would like to offer a, a brief introduction. My name is uh, Dr. Maxine Brinsenbach Janice. I'm Oglala Lakota from the Pine Ridge Reservation. And of course, I had to reach out to OLC and say, you know, is this something that you might be interested in? <laughs> so uh, just having connections with tribal communities um, related to this BHA certificate program. Um, I'm at Heritage University, which is situated on the homelands of the Yakima Nation. Um, in fact, it was founded by two Yakima women um, who um, at the time, uh, I think it was 40 years ago, went to, uh, it was affiliated with uh, Fort Wright College in um, Spokane and Fort Wright College was closing and, and they had a satellite uh, campus here um, on the Yakima homelands. And these two women didn't want this to go away. And long story short, um, they uh, were the trailblazers of the time and went to the Yakima nation um, and said, we wanna have a, we wanna establish a, a college here on the reservation. Um, and uh, went before council, what were, you know, in consultation with uh, the leadership and, and ask leadership, you know, is, should we establish a tribal college or uh, should we have an institution that is um, open for all? The leadership at the time um, said, uh, we wanna have education opportunities for everybody in the Valley here. So that is the birthing of Heritage College at the time um, and uh, now Heritage University. Um, so it really has its roots in um, the homelands of the Yakima Nation and is situated right on, on the lands of the people here. Um, it is not a tribal college, it's a private institution. It's not a Catholic university because uh, the president at the time um, was Sister Kathleen and, and uh, she's a Catholic nun. So everyone assumed it was a, a Catholic institution as well. However, it is, um, it is not a Catholic institution, um, just for clarification. So um, I'm the president's liaison for Native American Affairs here at Heritage University. And I also have a faculty appointment in uh, our BSN nursing program. Uh, my background is I'm a dental hygienist, but I'm also uh, hold a master's degree in public health and a doctoral degree in higher education. And, and I feel very strongly about the public health work that I do um, and this behavioral health um, aid certificate program. I looked at the needs, or uh, we looked at the needs of the community, what tribal, vo uh, tribal communities were saying. And uh, in collaboration with Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board, we've um, really um, built a, we feel a strong um, education pathway to meet the needs of our community, our tribal communities. Cordy, I'll move it back to you. Terrific, thank you. Uh, can you help me? It, do I have the whole slide now showing? 
Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so I would love to tell you a little bit about our uh, BHA program and what the curriculum map is looking like at this point. Um, we have been very excited to move through this process and um, have received, uh, we're on track for full approval and accreditation um, coming up here within um, the end of 2021. Um, our behavioral health aid certificate program uh, will not lead to an associate's degree. I want to make that clear. That really differentiates us from what Northwest Indian College is doing. And I admire the work that they've done to uh, embed that in an associate's degree program. Ours is actually embedded in our Bachelor of Social Work program. So our students who are in the BHA certificate pathway will be taking courses with our BSW students. And in our um, in a lot of our core coursework in that degree, um, we in addition to that to really emphasize uh, the traditional indigenous knowledge, we are uh, embedding seminar courses that are going to be co-taught with faculty and traditional knowledge scholars from our communities to really emphasize and reflect on indigenous wellness practices um, that will enhance the knowledge and skills the students are learning in the BSW courses. Our program is a two-year program, uh, full-time. We are starting January, so it will have a spring semester start instead of a fall semester start, like a traditional academic year. It'll follow a calendar year instead. Um, the first two semesters, I'll show you a copy of the curriculum map, but the first two semesters are really foundational general courses, uh, English composition, intro to psychology, uh, uh, etc. that um, are going to then build on the next, the last. Um... Corey, Corey? Yes. May I interrupt for just yes, a moment? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have the slides showing the are you moving the slides? It's just, uh, it's not in slide presentation mode. Oh gosh, I don't know what is happening here with me today. You'd think I wouldn't be, hadn't been using Zoom for the last two years. Um, let me see. Thank you for letting me know. So I was back here. Is that better? Are you seeing the two year program slide now? Okay, wonderful. Thank you. I'm going to go back one slide just so that you can see. Um, what I was here before, right? The BHA program is embedded in the BSW program, and we do have the seminar courses. So our program is full-time, um, two years. The first two semesters are those foundational generalist courses. Um, and then the second, actually the last three semesters, um, are skills and knowledge classes that uh, do have those seminar courses again. So our course delivery is a mix of face-to-face -face, hybrid and both um, synchronous and asynchronous online courses uh, so we basically are using every strategy we can to teach this program um, students do need to be able to travel to Toppenish for some courses and we um, should have some more clarity on that uh, shortly here we're working on um, figuring out exactly what that schedule will look like. Um, class schedules for Toppenish campus will open um, in a couple of weeks, and we should at least have that first semester outlined at that time. Um, we're really working on trying to minimize the number of days on campus and looking at what that recruitment process looks like to try to accommodate the students that will be enrolled in this first cohort. I know this might look a little overwhelming, but this is our two year plan. And so you, if I can walk you through that, you'll see the um, those foundational courses in the spring semester and then summer semester, along with the orientation courses that that BHA general orientation that um, will be for both 
uh, Northwest Indian College and Heritage students together, a crisis intervention course and the first BHA seminar. Uh, moving on into the summer, doing a, a history seminar that's focusing on indigenous history in the Northwest and the English composition, and then moving into the core courses in social work and um, psychology that will be taught alongside the seminar courses in the last three semesters. We don't necessarily have a nice neat um, ending point for BHA one, but students who do finish the two years we should be able to be certified at the BHA two level. Um, one other thing I want to point out before I turn it over for questions is that um, our certificate does have a pathway to a BSW uh, degree uh, outlined. So all of the courses that students take in the BHA certificate program can be applied toward a bachelor's degree. And um, we anticipate that at full time, it would take two additional years. So a total of four years to earn the bachelor's degree. Any questions for us? Um, Corey, if I may add just one comment um, to, uh, can you pull back your previous slide? Um, so uh, the question was, I think, Tim, you may have asked the question, um, an associate degree. Um, we, opted into, we opted to move into a certificate program, and um, I was looking more at sustainability of this BHA pathway when grant funding runs out. You know, what can we, where can we access funds? And if we look at our adult vocational training under the uh, tribal um, higher education program, students who opt into a certificate program uh, can receive funding, you know, through that mechanism as well. So we were strategically planning that, but yet still opening up a pathway for students should they want to go on to a BSW degree. So I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Doctor bring, brings him back. I just uh, I asked a question uh, as well from um, a perspective of the certification that you do authorize for the uh, person for the uh, behavioral health aid at the two, after the two years. They, they don't say they don't go on to become a, a bachelor of social worker or a master, whatever. Now, uh, the question being would be that person that you certify from heritage in that, that area, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Are they able to say, uh, use that certificate over in Oglala, for example, and provide services there? S suppose one of your people is relocated to Seattle and they take that, they're close to Toppenish and they drive over there. Would they be able to use that certificate that you grant at your university anywhere in America, the lower 48, so to speak? Or would they have to get a certificate in each like uh, area like Oklahoma, Billings, uh, Pine Ridge, or uh, 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 Aberdeen, or whoever it might be, Phoenix, well, can, that, can that certificate uh, suffice for all those various uh, areas? Well, the, uh, and um, Katie and Danica's team can respond to uh, some of this, uh, this question um, as well, but um, through the training program that we're offering, um, you know, they will be certified through the CHAP, uh, the Portland Area CHAP program. And so, uh, the reason for that is um, that the, this individual who it becomes certified from Heritage University to go out into practice, um, the potential for reimbursement to happen um, is, is kind of the, the key to this. Um, because you know you have this practitioner who is going to be working in troubled communities. So in Washington State, we're looking at uh, reimbursement uh, of these individuals to provide services, so that encounter rate comes into play. Um, that's not to say that I become a certified BHA and I go to Montana to Blackfeet country and maybe I work there, but I'm not, you know, certified to practice in that state, and so that's why you know we have to have this moving throughout sweeping across Indian country. Uh, yeah, but uh, I, Danica, um, I don't know who else is on, but if they would offer a response as well. Thank you, Dr. Jonas. 
So Tim, this is Tanya with the Northwest Portland Air and Health Board. And one of our um, goals for the Portland area was to create a uh, area CHAP certification board. And so currently we have one here for uh, our tribes here in the Northwest. It's an area certification board, uh, federally certification board. Uh, our first session was in August of this year. And one of the important tasks was for the 13 members to, well, actually right now we currently have 12 members, but overall it's a 13 member board who just reviewed and approved our standard and procedures for, for the area. And so in collaboration and support with the Portland Area Indian Health Services, we end with our tribes in Oregon and Washington, Idaho. We are moving forward and we are hoping to certify our, um, our service providers, our dental therapists and our behavioral health aides in the coming year. And if you and if you would like to have more information, we can also um, schedule a meeting with you and uh, Carrie Sampson Samuels, who is our chat director. Thank you very much. The last question, I guess, would be the cost of a person that attends that two-year program at Heritage. Do they have dorms? Um, no, Heritage is a commuter campus. And I see. So, okay. Yeah. And then, so what, what, Dr. Jazz, what, what, like, so the the fees for registration and the coursework books and all that stuff uh that is that is they, they can get uh higher ed for that can't they yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. so that's Power, whatever it's called through, yeah that's where you go through the avt program okay vocational training but the the program that is established at heritage um we've received uh grant funds through uh different sources to uh, support the students um, in their first and second year so they don't have to worry about books, tuitions and uh, tuition costs and, you know, those those incidentals with. Um, so, of course, collaborating with the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board on a lot of that. Thank you. If there were any questions from uh, prospective students, if there are any on the call who are interested in attending Heritage University, um, this could be a good opportunity to kind of um, let them know what your schedule looks like as a full-time worker, um, what dates and times would be best for con potentially commuting to Heritage. Um, yeah, this, like, I, like we have stated, this is the first time, it's all very new for all of us. So getting that feedback um, from community members, people who are working full-time, but would also wanna be a full-time student. Um, and even uh, health department directors, um, people who are working themselves full-time, um, what it could look like for their employees to attend school, um, potentially if there is a two-hour course uh, near the end of the workday. Uh, these are all things we're kind of uh, considering and. Um, working around and want to make sure that we're working with tribes to see what their availability looks like right now. If I could make one more comment just um, before we close is um, currently we have funding from a local um, uh, uh, community or uh, Greater Columbia Accountable Communities of Health, which are, you know, in different parts of Washington state. And um, they have offered to uh, support um, eight students uh, through this pathway, but also are um, uh, funding a faculty a staff person um, to facilitate that, that um, BHA program. So um, there's funding out there, especially um, you know, there is, we have such a need uh, for mental health services or behavioral health services. And so in any tribal community, I think that, um, uh, you know, you can have, you can get some support from external funders. If there are no further questions, please feel free to put it in the chat and we can um, recircle around near the end if anything pops up in the meantime. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Janice and Corey for giving that update. We really appreciate you and all the, the work that you've been doing to, to get this stood up and 
we're really excited. Um, and so, like I said, any, any questions that come up, put it in the chat. Um, but I think we're going to transition to Northwest Indian College update. Um, and so we have Yakai Stay Gorman on the line. So I'll let um, her introduce herself and provide that update. Thank you. Good morning. My Wi Fi is a little spotty. So while I'm doing my presentation, I will have to turn off my camera. A windstorm took down one of our um, power lines. So. <laughs> I'm using my hotspot currently, but um, I wanted to say yat e bine she ya yos katista nan ba gorman minche, but ani nishle ado no da na kai dene bushchin hushkan zo da shchet or jidi da shnale shuma to shje e Beverly do Emerson Gorman boye boye de nasha. Hello, my name is Yakaisi Gorman. I am a Northwest Indian College Behavioral Health Program Coordinator. And the work that I've been doing since July, um, I've been looking into getting the BHA program off the ground and launched by winter. And so that's what we'll go into. And I'll share my screen here for my presentation. So for Northwest Indian College, um, as I mentioned, I'm the Behavioral Health Program Coordinator. Um, our agenda for today, just an introduction of our Behavioral Health Program, an overview of the program, and then progress and outcome. Um, so introduction of Behavioral Health Aid Program. This will be a hybrid online degree program, and it'll be under an Associates in Technical Arts. Um, this will meet the requirements of an associate's degree with uh, transferable credits, and then also have the core requirements for behavioral health aid one and two. Um, certifications that will come out of this will be not only an associate's, but a behavioral health aid one and a behavioral health aid two. Um, additional certificates if the student, the student chooses to um, get certificate certification through Washington State um, will be an additional one to two uh, quarters at Northwest Indian College. So we are quarter based and um, looking at this degree program, we wanted to make sure that it was embedded, that students were able to get financial aid. Um, any type of scholarships that were coming through Northwest Indian College would cover anything such as tuition, um, we do have a dormitory there on at Northwest Indian College. Currently, um, we are at capacity, but I'm sure that once we're able to get this program off the ground, we're able to move forward with steps for more students to come back to the dormitories. Um, and then as a part of our behavioral health aid program, we are connecting with Northwest Tribes cultural departments, um, specifically, our main campus is in Bellingham, Washington on the Lummi Reservation. And so we are connecting with Lummi um, Cultural Department to make sure that students are immersed into the Kosalis culture, any values, um, beliefs, or anything like that, that it is embedded within their teaching program. And this will also be a part of their internship program. Um, the degree plan, has a little bit of the care program, chemical dependency, and then also with some behavioral health. Um, so if a student decides to go into the degree of the care program, then they have all of the met requirements in order to go into that program. So this is just an overview of um, our classes. So we've created a, a behavioral health um, general orientation, introduction to behavioral health, health and privacy documentation, and crisis management. The rest of our courses are built off of a human ser um, human services. So we're looking at individual counseling, multicultural counseling, stress management, group facilitation, and then chemical dependency in families. So a lot of these um, will work coincide with the behavioral health um, requirements that are met through CHAP 
And then the last part there with the, the supervised practicum and internship, students will have 160 hours um, and only 100 is required by Northwest Portland Indian Health Board and CHAP. So the additional 60 hours will go towards being immersed into the cultural department and learning more about um, the place that they're at. So giving a little bit of uh, place-based knowledge systems. And that is for the, um, sorry, for the BHA-1 certification. So those are all the classes for the BHA-1 certification. And then moving into the BHA-2, which would be around the second year, and this would be the classes that they would be taking in the second year. So making sure that they get pharmacology of substances, airborne and bloodborne pathogens, um, chemical dependency case management. So this, we use a behavioral health aid book already. And so this kind of coincides with students being able to mesh together with chemical dependency care and behavioral health. And so since all of these across the board kind of um, need a little bit more integration to understand, you know, what our um, different parts where we fit and how we can contribute to um, the whole. And so we'll have a lot of these classes that will have different students and but all in the same one, having different conversations about what it means. Um, we have human services, chemical dependency assessment and treatment, and then general psychology and abnormal psychology, and then another supervised practicum internship. And so um, our overview of the program, it should take about two years and then plus one to two quarters if they want to go into um, getting a bachelor's in chemical dependency and then going into the care program. Or they can take those one to two um, quarters and then get a certification through Washington State to work under substance use disorder. Um, so our progress right now, we had our first read through for curriculum committee, which was the BHA um, 100 general orientation. Um, it went very well. So we'll be going back on October 15th. And then these are pending approval classes that we've created, as well as going over program outcomes. And then by the end of uh, November 2021, we should be going through NWCCU accreditation um, application review, and then um, launching our program in winter 2022. So we're moving quickly and we want to get this um, up and off the ground, get a lot of these things kind of cross our T's and our I's and uh, make sure that students are getting a well-rounded education as well as not just in behavioral health, but also um, making note that they are connected to the cultural resource department if there's any questions that maybe um, have to do with historical trauma or um, inter intergenerational trauma, anything like that. Um, we are connected with the behavioral health uh, clinic. And so making sure that students are aware that they are able to have conversations with them. So we'll be moving forward in 2022. Um, and I'll leave this part open for questions. You mentioned that you did have norms. There are capacity now, but in the winter quarter when it starts, there may be an opportunity for students to uh, uh, stay at that campus to uh, participate in this uh, program. Yes. Okay. And then uh, again, is, it, is this limited just to the tribes in uh, Idaho, Washington, and Oregon at this point in time? Northwest Indian College is open to all tribes. Okay. Um, yeah. And so we Thank try you. to serve all tribes. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions?
Good morning, this is Tanya with the Northwest Portland Air and Health Board. I don't have any questions, but I do wanna share with folks that uh, since 2018, uh, it's just been wonderful to see the progress and the evolution of this program. And I'm just so honored and uh, amazed at all the hard work and dedication that everyone has put into this. Everyone has put in their heart and soul into this. And so it's beautiful to see this work evolve right before our very eyes. So thank you. Thank you for being with us and thank you for your questions. And uh, once again, you can always email us for uh, any clarifications, any material, any handouts, any one-on-one -on -one sessions. We would love to meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. So once again, thank you for all of your hard work. And if we have any team members on the line who would like to um, uh, provide any feedback or, or, or updates, the floor is yours. This is Katie. I just wanted to quickly um, do some follow up with recruitment. Um, the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board has that open application for prospective students. We're still recruiting throughout this month. That deadline is October 30th. Um, that is kind of a soft deadline. If you are still kind of working through what that looks like with your tribe or within your tribal health department, um, we're willing to work with you um, after that date to kind of help you um, figure that out. Um, both institutions will be starting in January 2022. Um, like I said, this uh, for the board, um, if you're applying for that application, uh, you will be receiving um, 5,000 after your first completed year one, and then 7,500 after year two. Um, and we're keeping that open for students to use it as a stipend or a scholarship. If you're in a tribe who will cover tuition, um, then you can use that, those funds as a stipend to support your li personal living expenses um, and whatever you see fit to use that for, we send the, the check directly to the student. Uh, however, if you are working for a tribe that um, doesn't have ABT or um, outside scholarships or tuition support, then you can use that 12,500 um, for tuition. So the board will pay the institution directly for your tuition costs um, so that you will uh, be fully supported for your tuition fees. Um, so like I said, we're leaving that up to students to use that stipend slash scholarship, however they see fit. Um, and the board is also covering all of your student supplies expenses. Uh, we provide students with a laptop, mouse, laptop covers, um, anything uh, needed, school supplies, books, um, any of those fees that a student needs, we are covering the cost for that. Um, and then last but not least, I really wanna emphasize the benefit of this program, having a elder knowledge holder or a culture keeper. Um, Tanya has been uh, providing really amazing gatherings um, to recruit for elders, um, for our BHAs, um, and so that's a really key piece that we're incorporating. Um, we really want to make sure BHA has a relative um, that can walk aside them throughout this program, provide that mentorship um, and that cultural understanding. Um, so that's, an, that's a, another really large benefit. Um, so I'd be happy to send uh, my recruitment PowerPoint out to anyone who would like a copy. Um, if anyone has any other questions, I'm happy to answer as well. Thank you, Katie, for that valuable information. And if we could share that uh, application link with folks, we can definitely add that to uh, today's recording. Does anyone have any last uh, comments, questions? It looks like Cheryl has her hand. Hey, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, Tim, I just wanted to um, thank you for joining uh, the CHAP expansion uh, program here with the Northwest Portland Area Need Health Board. I'm happy to hear of your interest in Montana. Um, you know, this is fairly new to us in the uh, Portland area for BHAs as we expand the community health aid program. So uh, be persistent in your work. Um, don't give up. I mean, this is all the work of the tribes in the Portland area that have come together to be very persistent and move these programs forward. So now that we have uh, uh, 
dental health aid therapist in many of our, in the three states of the Portland area um, and in multiple tribes, you know, we're looking forward to move this BHA program even further for that as well. But again, I, my message to you is be persistent. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Okay. I know we're running a little behind, but once again, thank you for all of your time and effort and spending uh, your morning with us. And once again, you can reach out to us and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you everyone for participating. Thank you. Well, Pilar, Tanya. Pilar, Maya. Thank you so much, Tim. Mm. Talk to you later. Ah, uh, to cop.